Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. We're going to talk rugby right here in Polk County. That's rugby and the Polk Senior Games, as well as smoke on the water. Stick around, everybody, for this week's edition of Sports Central. Welcome back to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan alongside Chris Caprios. And uh, it's that time of year. It's it's hard to believe it's already the end of January. Yeah. Well, I thought you meant it's that time of year that I come on the show. Like oh, once you come a on year, once a I year. Make my so. annual appearance. Here I am. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it is. It seems like uh, Christmas was like. A couple last, days ago. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, it, it, that's how it happens. Now, there is no slow time. We talk about it all the time now. There's no downtime in Polk County. That's a good thing yeah. uh, in some ways, but in other ways. A lot of visitors, a <laughs> lot of events, and we're going to talk about some of that uh, today on Sports Central. But we want to thank some of our partners who make Sports Central possible. And this first segment brought to us by the Hilton Garden Inn in Lakeland. Uh, proud partners of tourism, sports, marketing, and we appreciate them. Yep. Um, but you look at, uh, we always talk about it, Mark Jackson talks about it. Once that calendar turns over, we're off and running, but really it's year round mm -hmm. uh, with the, the events. And you look at some of the long standing events here in Polk County, and one of those events you have to think about is the Polk Senior Games. And that's Coincidentally, our first segment. Yeah, 28th year for the event. Uh, and, and again, it's uh, I'm sure to you all, uh, it probably seems like it was just yesterday you just started it, but uh, that's yeah. how fast things go, but 28 years. Yeah, Dwayne Hopkins uh, joining us from the Polk Senior Games. And uh, Dwayne, welcome back to Sports Central. Thank you very much for having us. Happy New Year. I know we're 20 some days in, but <laughs> it's right. the first time same, we've seen same you. you. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, let's talk about the, the Polk Senior Games. And, and Chris uh, mentioned how, how long it's been running here in Polk County, but uh, for those watching at home, tell us what the Polk Senior Games is, and then we can get into kind of some of the different sports and disciplines. So it started about 28 years ago, as Chris mentioned, uh, when Nancy Thornberry, really the, the founder of the Games, mm -hmm. uh, happened to see her brother participating in the state of New York in the Games. Mm -hmm. And she came back to Lakeland and said, can't we do that in Polk County? <laughs> so she got a few other movers and shakers together, and the next thing you know, we started. She actually was inducted into the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame, a yeah. uh, large part because of her, uh, her commitment to this event and, and creating it. But uh, talk yeah. about the senior games and, and how it's evolved over the well, years. Well, first year, I think we had between seven and 800 participants. Now we run about 2,500 every year. Wow. It's an Olympic-style event, where we try to pattern it after the Olympics. You need to be 50 years of age or older to participate, 50 by the end of this year, as a matter of fact, so some 49-year-olds could even ah. get in this year. Uh, and we compete in age groups, 50 to 54, 55 to 59, and so forth. Usually men against the men, women against the women, but in some events, they compete against each other, like Sudoku or checkers, seniors, a game we call senior smarts. So we have them, men and women competing against each other. And we award medals to the top three winners, you know, gold, silver, and bronze, just as the Olympics do. We have um, almost 100 different events. When you break down the track events, 50, 100, 200, 400, and that kind of thing, the swimming events with the different strokes, there's nearly 100 different events that we put on. And uh, you can sign up for as many as your schedule will allow. It costs 10 bucks to sign up for the first one, $3 for each one thereafter to a maximum of $28. And for that, you get a beautiful T-shirt that's got our logo on it, mm -hmm. and you get a heck of a lot of fun uh, meeting some new folks and some new competitors. It's good, friend, friendly, fun competition. <laughs> the idea is to keep us seniors active, both physically and mentally, to keep the quality of life there for as long as we can. Yeah. So. You mentioned the both physically and mentally active. You talked about some of the more sedentary uh, events like Sudoku and things like that. But we talk about it all the time. We're actually going to see some footage later on in the show of uh, senior softball tournament champion. The, there, there are some great athletes out oh, there. they will probably give Neil and I a, a run uh, in several of the events. Yeah. So <laughs> talk right. about that. Like the, the, the level of athletes is, is pretty strong. It's amazing. And, you know, there are events like powerlifting. Mm. But to come back to the track and field events, to see 80 and 90 year olds going down that track in the mm -hmm. 50 yard or 50 meter dash or the 100 meter dash, it's really inspiring to see mm -hmm. that happening, for them to stay active this long. So uh, we've got lots of, we've got an event for just about everybody, whether you want to be active as in track and field or you want to sit and play checkers, cribbage, 
be competitive mm -hmm. that way, but it's good, friendly competition. When you talk about the various levels of competition, you know, uh, some of these athletes may just want to participate in the Polk Senior Games. Some are aspiring to go on to uh, state games or national games. Talk a little bit about that. I'm glad you mentioned that because our games do allow you to qualify for the state games, which are held every year in December. This year they were held down in the Fort Lauderdale area, mm -hmm. uh, last year in the Clearwater area. But through the state games, and you can also qualify for the national games. National games are held every two years in the odd numbered years. So the next national will be in 2021 mm -hmm. and it will be in Fort Lauderdale. So if you can qualify for the state and then go through the state to the national, it'll be right in our backyard. Wow. And the top five finishers in each event qualify for the state games. And then likewise, when you go to the state games, you qualify for the national. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about that road to get there, but it obviously starts here. You have to compete here. So how does someone sign up? What are the costs involved? Because obviously there's so many different events. Is there a different cost for each event, or how does that work? Well, most of the costs are the first one. The first event is 10 bucks, and then $3 for each one thereafter. Mm. There are some fees for some of the events, like golf and bowling. There's a nominal extra mm -hmm. for carts and things like sure. that. But it's very nominal. Uh, you can sign up a couple of different ways. You can go to the website. Uh, which is www.polkseniorgames.org mm -hmm. and download the entry fee or the entry form, excuse mm -hmm. me, and it's very self-explanatory. You can fill it out and send it in or you can simply call the office here in Bartow, as a matter of fact, at 863-533-0055 and they'll be happy to send you one of these booklets mm -hmm. which has the, that entry form in it. So it's very simple, very straightforward. So Dwayne, tell us about the events that you've competed in over the years, and uh, this is your time to, to talk about you. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I'm not comfortable doing that, but I will. Well, but, I mean. but, okay, <laughs> you don't have to tell us about all the awards that you've won, but you can talk <laughs> or, about... Or how poorly I've done. Is that <laughs> well, either way, either, either way, either way. But way. more about the experience, <laughs> yeah. more about the experience and, and what an you, athlete that participates. I'm glad you asked it that yeah. way, because one of the first years that I participated, I played tennis doubles. My partner and I played a, uh, a team from, happened to be from Winter Haven. We lost. And that team, though, enjoyed the competition so much that they asked us to join their, what is it, the USDA team that they played on, mm -hmm. that they had in Winter Haven. So we played with them. So some new friends and a right. new ex experience. Uh, so tennis is, I play singles now. And I also, uh, this year I'm entering three other events. By the way, the tennis is held in Lakeland. Mm. Uh, my second event in Lakeland will be the Senior Smarts game that I mentioned, which is a form of Jeopardy, uh -huh. with questions from each of the different eras so they fit the age groups. Nice. The third event I'm in this year will be Cribbage, which is a card game that I've, mm -hmm. I think is played in some of the mobile home parks here. <laughs> uh, and that's played in Auburndale. And then I'm going to do, what's the other one I'm going to do? Um, uh, Scrabble, oh, okay. which is in Mulberry. So we've got games all over the county too. Right. They're not all in Lakeland, right. they're not all in Bartow. They're all over the county to try to make it as convenient and provide as much of an opportunity as we can for as many people as we can. Well, and you talked about the variety of locations. It also speaks to, and we talk about it here all the time, the great facilities we have in this county, and we're able to bring in events, but also have homegrown events. So yeah. it not only benefits those visiting, but also yeah. our citizens in a case like this. And I'm glad you mentioned that, too, because without the cooperation of local <clears throat> people and organizations and facilities making themselves available to mm -hmm. us, we couldn't do this. In, a different, in a, uh, addition to the 2,500 participants, We've got more than 700 volunteers that are necessary to make these games run. The event managers, the timers, the scorekeepers, the people who handle the refreshments, that kind of thing, more than 700 help us with that. In addition to that, we've got more than 200 individuals, organizations, businesses that give us support of one kind or another, goodie bag items for the closing ceremony, for instance. Uh, so without them, we couldn't make this happen. The major sponsors are public supermarket charities, Homer and Annette Thomas and Thompson Legacy, the James W. Sykes family, and Chris Sykes has been in this since 1992, hmm. hasn't missed a year, so this will be your 28th, <laughs> the uh, CPS Investment Advisors, as well as Humana and Best Value. So those are the major, but we've got 200 others that help us wow. in various ways. And these aren't only just Polk County 
participants. There's there's some international participants. There's some. Uh, talk to us about some maybe superstars that uh, mm -hmm. are coming in or the superstars from Polk County that are participating. No, no residency requirements. The only requirement is to be 50 years old mm -hmm. or older. Uh, it's not just Polk County. It's not just Florida. You don't have to be a U.S. resident. We get lots of Canadian participants. Yeah. We have had a man who first heard of the games when he came to visit his family here in Lincoln. He came from Switzerland. Thereafter, he scheduled his visits to family to coincide with the games nice. and participated in the games for a number of years. So anybody's eligible. As long as you're 50 years old, mm -hmm. you can come and participate. That's fantastic. Well, and you talked about how the volunteers really make this event run. It wouldn't happen without them. So we talked about how people can sign up to participate. Is it the same process? I would assume you're always taking volunteers. I'm always willing to accept <laughs> volunteers to help because there's a lot of work to be done. We have a, a board of a roughly 40 of us. We have, we're a nonprofit. We have one employed executive director who really runs everything or coordinates everything. And the rest of it, it's a working board. Hmm. So we all have assignments to do. Yeah. Well, Dwayne, thank you so much, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. The, the time flies right yeah. by. Uh, we've been talking to Dwayne Hopkins of the Polk Senior Games. Uh, the event date, one more time, February 29th through March 16th. And the important date is the final deadline to have your entry in, which is Valentine's Day. Okay. And it has to be received by then, not postmarked by then, but it has February to be in 14th. our office on the So 14th. by February 13th, you need to have taken care of whatever you're doing That's for right. the next day for Valentine's Day <laughs> and registered uh, you got for Polk it. You Senior got Games. It. Very yeah. good deal. All right. Well, absolutely. <laughs> and again, PolkSeniorGames.org. Right. Wayne, thanks so much. We appreciate That's your right. time. Thank you. Well, Chris mentioned it earlier, and it's an annual tradition here in Polk County. I think it's been going 12, 13 years, something like yeah. that. The it's Senior Softball event. Tournament of Champions will be coming up real soon here in Polk County, but we're going to look back at some action from a few years ago. Neil and Chris be back right here on Sports Central. Senior softball, you know, it's, it's probably one of the largest uh, softball, uh, senior softball USA. We're uh, we are all over, all over. We have a World Master Championship uh, in Las Vegas, uh, which is you know we have 541 teams, uh, so we're really proud of that. Uh, uh, slow pitch softball, we have a lot of a lot of safety factors here. We have double bases at first base. Uh, we have a, a, a double base at home place where we don't kind of we kind of keep everybody away from you know from the uh, from the areas that are really a lot of traffic coming home you know and going to first base. Uh, we uh, there are a lot of a lot of things in senior softball that are, are, are safety factors for the, for our, our older fellows and our younger fellows. Yeah, and uh, so this is this is a lot of them. We we, we take pride in. We have two bases at first. When the, when the ball is hit to the infield, the runner, batter runner, takes to the orange bag. There's an orange bag. That's his bag. And the white bag is for the infielder or the first baseman to make the tag. So, but it, it, it's a lot of safety to, to the senior softball. Yeah. They, think about, they think about the players. Yeah. This is our tournament of champions. This is one of our elite type champions. Uh, all these teams that are here, are are they are winners uh you just can't walk on this tournament by just paying your fees this is this is a elite type tournament and one of our best tournaments of the year and these guys have won national championships regional championships and this is why they're here we're from Columbus, indiana and louisville kentucky in that area and there's some from bloomington indiana so we're we're pretty well scattered out we have uh, 14 down here, and we have about 17 guys on the team on the roster. The weather is really nice because from where we come from up there in February, it's like 20 and every once in a while snow, so this is wonderful down here. We enjoy coming down every time. Oh, it's, it's enjoyable. I, everybody, you know, if, if we can still keep our bodies healthy, you know, and everybody enjoys doing this, you know, because we all come from different walks of life, you know 
and we all get together because you know most of these guys we don't play together during the year we're just from the area and then we get together and come down here and 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 like you said have the camaraderie uh, and we just enjoy it especially with our age you know Right here, I'm hosting the West Side uh, uh, Softball Complex, and I have 80, 80, 80, 80 year old teams, 80, 85 and 80s. I have 70 and 75s, and I also have uh, AA and AAA, uh, 65 and 70 uh, AA and AAA teams here. Uh, also, in some of the other complexes, we got the 40s to the 50s, and the 55s and the 60s, and 65s and the younger guys. But uh, I've got most of the older fellows here. Uh, I mean, we've got guys here that are 87 years old, 85 years old, running bases, having a ball. And they do still have it, I'm telling you. They can still play this game of softball. I love to play in tournaments, I really do. And I, we play down in, uh, in Naples, I play in the league. And we play twice a week, uh, and I enjoy that. And I like going around to tournaments during the year. Uh, it's, I love softball. It's one of the things I, you know, I still do it fairly well. Uh, Polk County is kind of a, uh, really, it's a, it's in a central location for us. Uh, it gives the, the, the teams at Minnesota and all of them can come to the, come to us here on a nice summer day in, in Florida. So this is the main reason why we mostly have it here in, in Polk County. And it's also some some very nice fields for us to play on also. The, the guys getting to meet, meet teams that, that they don't meet during the regular season, uh, you know, like, like out in California and also Minnesota. Uh, a lot of teams from south here uh, kind of play each other a lot, you know, just to qualify to getting these tournaments. And, uh, but it's, it's one of our elite tournaments, really. Is. Everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Chris Caprios. And I don't know if you remember, but you remember the first year of that? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. It's, it's been a great <laughs> event for a long, long time. Uh, and we're always happy to have them uh, keep coming back to Polk County. But this literally, we always talk about a destination of champions. That certainly is the case for that event because oh, you yeah. have to have won a tournament in somewhere state. in the country yeah. to be invited to that event. So, yeah. and I know they've already have, it's like nearly 115 teams, more than 115 mm. teams for this year. So, yeah. Exciting stuff. They love hey, coming back here. Yeah. <laughs> They'll probably be eating at Aboyalos, <laughs> by the way, our segment sponsor of this segment. Aboyalos, a great part of tourism and sports. You see how we did that? Yeah. You like how I did in the last segment. I brought up, hey, we're going to see some footage. That's, that's, I do it once a year, but I still remember. Well, oil <laughs> machine. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to our next segment. Uh, we have Daniel Francoeur from the Lakeland Lancers Rugby, and uh, of course, you and I have known each other personally for a long time, our kids yeah. growing up together and all that, but uh, welcome to Sports Central. I don't think Thank we've you. had you on before. Nope, nope, this is the first time. Yeah. It's exciting yeah, stuff, and yeah. uh, the sport of rugby continues to grow in Polk County, and Absolutely. Uh, uh, we want to just hear about what, what's new and uh, what are the Lancers doing, and maybe, I know there's some, uh, some events coming up where we're trying to grow the sport in Polk County, so let's start with what's new with the Lancers. Well, one of the first things we're looking to do is expand it into youth. So we, we are hosting with the city of Bartow a uh, open house hmm. for um, parents to come, bring their children, ask us, the, the coaches, questions about the sport and how they can be involved. And what we're trying to do at first is run clinics throughout the year, hmm. maybe once a quarter, mm -hmm. uh, once a month, and then from there start a league where it would be, a uh, good thing about youth rugby, there's no contact. It's all either flag or touch. So I know the big thing is worrying about concussions mm -hmm. and rugby being a very co yeah. contact sport when you get older. But with youth rugby, it's flag and touch, concussion. There's always chance of concussions with any sport, mm -hmm. right. but safety is priority number one with this sport. So that's a modification. That's not just at the local level. That's for all youth rugby around yes. the country, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And now, are there youth rugby leagues around here yet or is that what you're trying to start up no we're trying to start one okay. up locally there's um usa rugby does mm -hmm. have um rugby 
the, the mini rugby. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think the closest one is outside of state. So wow. this is really a, a, a big thing here. So it's not just a Polk County thing, it's a state of Florida thing as well to try to get more folks into the sport. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're really looking forward to it. And really, if you look at any sport, that's what they always say is the sport's going to die if you don't get the youth involved early on. And I mean, you look at the growth of soccer, how mm -hmm. that's grown from mm -hmm. the youth gra ground level up. And I'm sure trying to do the same thing with rugby, right? Yeah, yeah, just to get the word out there. Not mm -hmm. too many people know about rugby and, yeah. and what they do know about, oh, it's a brutal game. Game. Well, it's also a safe game yeah. because we do things properly. Well, and that uh, that open house is Monday, February third, from six thirty to seven thirty at the Bartow Civic Center, and we'll circle back to that. Uh, but let's talk about the the Lancers, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, formed, founded in 2017. Talk about, obviously there's an initiative uh, to grow the sport through the youth, as Chris just said, but let's talk about the adult side of things and, and you know, why was there a call to action to form the group in 2017 and what's been going on since? Well, we've, uh, you we said it's been going since then. This is my start of my second year, um, trying to get recruiting out there. And I was a 47, 48 year old rookie. Mm. So, the, we need, with the youth, we can get numbers to, to progress our existing team as well as bring old timers in because we started another, another team called the, uh, the Old Boys <laughs> where we're looking to base out of Bartow as well where it's 35 and older and we mm. will travel and do competitions uh, for what we call rugger fests or, or just full uh, on competitions for the weekend. And I think it, it's probably very similar to, you know, before Florida Youth Soccer was recruited by sports marketing in the city of Auburndale to be in Polk County, there was not near as much youth soccer or, or soccer yeah. in general going on. Um, and this kind of is along the same lines of, of that, you know, lacrosse faced the same thing. Most of the lacrosse players were in the Northeast uh, and then it kind of moved down the Eastern Seaboard and then lacrosse is big mm -hmm. business in Florida and in, in Polk County. This is kind of along that same lines. Right. It hasn't been in Polk County. You guys are making an effort. Of course, we're here trying to, to promote that effort. Uh, but talk about, uh, you know, are you guys going around the state and competing against other teams? Uh, the tournament side of things and how this whole thing can evolve into um, not only a, a local club thing, but obviously economic impact for Polk County. Right, yeah, absolutely. We, um, last year we were what they call a social group, mm -hmm. where it, you, it's not as stringent. Um, what they did this year is they added Division Four, and we got rolled up into Division Four where the, the rules are more stringent. You, you actually have to, if you miss a game, you get fined, and not where you just show up and drink a bunch of beer and play rugby and hit each other. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we've stepped up um, as a team in Division Four. And this, our first game was last week. We played at home against Daytona, and then this weekend we're traveling to uh, Indian River. Hmm. So, and we played Gainesville, uh, their A team. We, we play all over Florida. When you say we played, I'm sorry, when you say we played at home, where's, where's home at? Our home field is at Dobbins Park. Okay. We get out there the, the night before, hopefully it's mowed. We stripe <laughs> the lines. We, we do as a team, you know, we yeah, get a few yeah. guys to volunteer, stripe the lines, come in the next day. We make sure put the uprights up. Wow. And then from there, we do our stretching and then straight into the game. And wow. then we clean up after and go to our social. Well, you mentioned you were a rookie uh, just a couple of years ago. How did you get into the sport? I mean, it's not, you, we talked about growing the youth part of it, but it's not a sport kids grow up playing around the neighborhood. So how did, how did you get into it? Um, when I first got out of high school, I, I was in the military and I got okay. stationed into England. Mm -hmm. And I learned about the sport there. Didn't have an opportunity to play. Yeah. Came back home. There's, once again, <laughs> no one knows anything about rugby. And then when I, a couple of years back, I was working out in Bartow and I saw a sign for the Lakeland Lancers. Hmm. Let me give them a call. I've always wanted to play. Come on out, we'll set you up, we'll show you how to play, and we'll have a good time. It's wow. been doing it ever since. If someone's not able to, and going back to the, the, the meet and greet and the open house on Monday, February 3rd, 6.30 to 7.30 at the Bartow Civic Center, introduction to coaches, explanation of the sport, if someone's not able to get to that, what are they going to hear there as far as if I'm, you know, uh, if I'm a parent, I've got a youngster, and I'm thinking about getting them involved in the sport, why rugby? And, and what would they learn in that meeting? Right. Uh, we're trying to offer as an alternative sport that will be opposite of football. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're, your child, either boy or male or female, mm -hmm. plays football on the off season, if they want to stay in shape mm -hmm. and not want to play baseball, they find baseball a little bit boring and, and you know, wants it in the outfield, this gets everybody involved, boys and girls, from, eight, from first grade all the way up to eighth grade. Um, we'll run clinics. It, show them how to pass the ball, how to run with the ball, um, 
proper form. Uh, there is a, a proper form in holding the ball. We got to hold it with two hands and not tucking in like football. Yeah. Proper form in passing. So we'll, we'll teach that and how to from the beginning, so there's no bad habits. And like you said, we'll do that once a month or, or once a quarter, and maybe mm -hmm. half day or, or two hour right. clinics. Well, and, and talk about the safety aspect. You mentioned earlier uh, concussions in any sport, but yeah. in rugby can be rough. But absolutely, I mean, there's somewhat you wear helmets, correct or no? No, no helmets. Uh, I mean, the, like the, the little padded things. The, there are some players <laughs> that they do wear the padded, yeah. and you know, it does protect the ears because you'll see some players they'll have that cauliflower yeah. ear when mm -hmm. when you're in a scrum, you kind of rub up on it. Yeah. Um, but there is that type of protection. But the way we teach tackling, um, it's it's not trying to spear someone and take them right. off. You're, you're, you're not only protecting them, you're protecting yourself. You right. Heads up, and you're hitting proper motion. Um, we won't be teaching tackling for these younger kids, mm -hmm. but with the con concussion side of it, it's flag. We're gonna be grabbing a flag or, mm -hmm. or two hand type push. Right. So that, that limited contact. I've gotta ask you, I've always wondered, but I'm too chicken to get out there and actually do it. So what is it like being in the bottom of that? Is it called a scrum? scrum yeah. What is that? That just looks like chaos. Um, it's forwards that do that, and that's the position I play, and that's probably one of, it's extremely tiring, but it's probably one of the funnest parts of the games for yeah. me. Yeah, uh, For the fact, because you get just pounds of meat just pushing <laughs> on each People other. Going against, and you're yeah. pushing them, and they're pushing you, and you're trying to win that ball. It's... Now, if it collapses, it's not fun. L last week, I was kind of stuck up like this, but the, the sir or ma'am, they're there to keep, the, uh, to keep everything safe. Hmm. So th they'll stop it. If it's not going the way they like it, they'll stop and have you reset. How's the team doing? We won our first game. Nice. We, we won the last, the last minutes by, with, a, with a penalty kick. We won by one. Wow. So it was a wonderful game. Is this open for fans to come out and, and watch the competitions? Where can they get a, a list of home games, website, things like that? Yeah, it, it's once again, it's at Dobbins Park in, on Ariana in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. It's free of charge. We don't charge anything. Um, we, we do have a website, um, Lakeland Rancers Rugby, and they can go up there and we have our uh, schedule up there on the calendar. Lakeland. Nice. LancersRugby.com? Yes, I believe, and there's also a Facebook page you can yep. search for that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, or just uh, give it a Google, and I'm sure Google knows yeah. everything. They'll get you there. Are you going to sign up? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I have bad knees already. I tell you. Uh, that's, I'm past my prime, I think. You, you, you're retired. You yeah, just yeah, stay on the, 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 yeah. the anchor side of things <laughs> and stuff. Well, uh, Daniel, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We appreciate what you and, and what the Lancers are doing to promote the sport of rugby. And we look forward to working with the Lancers and trying to create events that are going to bring uh, more folks into Polk County and you know, generate that economic impact yeah. for sports. That's, That's great. great. Thank you. Thanks I appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck. This yep. All right. Well, we talked about it earlier, uh, the, how Polk County is the epicenter of youth soccer in the state of Florida. And we have some footage from an event that happened not too long ago uh, from the Florida Youth Soccer Association. And we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to have more, and we're going to talk about smoke on the water. So stick around, everybody, for more of Sports Central. our U9, U10 festival, where we have all clubs from C1 to C6 playing in this area. We have a total of 83 teams here. Each region, which is like C1, which would be like Hillsborough County, C2 is Pinellas County, C3 is Sarasota, um, Venice area, and Braden, Braden River, 
C4 is Polk County, which is where we are now at Albendale. And C5 is down in uh, Fort Myers, uh, Lee County, and Collier County. And C6, which is our northern one, which uh, has Brooksville, Pasco County, uh, Hernando County, Citrus County, and so we have teams from there too. Looking at almost 9,600 kids here. You got you know 83 teams here, and they have an average of about 12 to 14 players per team. And they come with uh, probably two coaches, maybe one manager, and, and then you have all their parents here too. So it brings a big crowd. So we're looking at probably 10 to 12,000 people here. to bring it to Polk County because we need something like at least 14 fields and here at Albendale's Fields at the Florida Youth, Youth Soccer Association we have over 10 fields where we break them down to two per field because it's a small side of games and we just use all the fields we can right now we're using a total of seven fields three in the front and four in the back and we break them down, there's, there's four, there's eight, there's eight fields over there and there's six fields down in the beginning. The session stands, uh, one put on by the county and the other one is put on by Albendale Soccer Club. To me, this is centralized and we get to use the Florida Youth Soccer Building and their field. celebrated 40 years, you know, so we've just been together this long part of soccer and and this is just a beginning, this is like a startup for my Region Cup. My Region Cup is the same district from C1 to C6 and next week we'll be at different sites. We're at a total of 11 sites next week and we got from C1 to C6 again and we're going to 11 sites everywhere from Home of Sasa, all the way down to Naples, and including Charlotte, uh, Brandon. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Chris Caprios, and uh, always good to see the youth soccer events out there at Lake Myrtle and really yeah. around the county. Yeah, we left to come here today, and there were a lot of people at Lake Myrtle playing soccer. So it's uh, it's that time of year for soccer events, a national event. And right now, I think we're going to talk about next segment. See how I'm, I'm getting good at these uh, You're very good. segues. But um, this segment, we have a sponsor and some great guests, too. Yeah, Party Rentals. Uh, they are a great partner of Tourism and Sports Marketing. And uh, not only do they help with some of the events that we're doing, uh, there's quite a bit of they events going on. Too, and they yeah. stay busy, as well. Well, speaking of staying busy, our next two guests have been very busy planning for this year's Smoke on the Water. Uh, so we want to welcome to the program now Curtis Reddick and Courtney Marshall, both on the committee, I'm assuming, yes. uh, for Smoke <laughs> on the Water, but welcome yes. to Sports Central. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to have you all here. The events here, we call it barbecue season in Polk County because yeah. we have so many events, but yours is always one that we have to mark on the calendar. It's, it's a great one. It's for a good cause, too. Yes. Um, well, you know, 100% of the proceeds goes to our organization, um, and, and that's the beauty of it. It's, it's not an event that goes here, goes there. All of the proceeds help the Boys and Girls Club of Polk County. Yeah, 
And how many years is this now? Is it 16? 16. 15? 16? 16? Wow. That's incredible. And you were talking about how the, the Boys and Girls Club of Winter Haven, the, the event itself is in Winter Haven, um, 2400 Havendale Boulevard. Uh, but Courtney, tell us about this event this year. How's it different? How's it the same? What can we look forward to? It's, um, it's always a super fun event. Um, we're going to have wonderful vendors this year, a yeah. great band lineup. Nice. And um, the ski show is going to put on a couple of performances nice. for us down by the lake. It's always a great time. Yeah, lots of, uh, see we talked, you, you asked me last segment, am I going to sign up for rugby? Nothing against rugby, but this is the kind of event I can sign up for, get into eating, <laughs> barbecue. Uh, I mean, you have vendors, uh, I don't know how many vendors you're going to have this year, uh, but talk about that, the variety of things. I mean, you can get everything from the traditional barbecue to some, some different stuff. Yeah, we have over 60 vendors that come out every year and put, and put together a great menu. Uh, you can get anything from fried Oreos to um, um, great barbecue. Uh, Paella. Uh, yeah. Strawberry shortcake. I mean, it, it's just the, the menus are unlimited, um, I think. But, again, we're barbecue competition, and so we specialize in, in pulled pork, yeah. um, ribs, chicken, and those competitors – come from all over, mm -hmm. all over the country to compete. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Smoke on the Water, uh, coming back once again the 16th year. It'll be Friday, February 7th, starting at 6 o'clock, and then Saturday all day, uh, February 8th, I think starting around 10 a.m. Yes. Uh, in the morning, uh, going to 6 p.m. Uh, talk about the cost, uh, the entry cost and the parking cost, because these, these are very low, these are very low numbers. <laughs> yeah, on, on Friday night, we have our big beach party, so the cost to get in is, is $10, but on Saturday, which um, is the really the opening day. Uh, it's actually two dollars to get in the event, and parking. Uh, I believe is parking is free. Yeah, well, that's I, a good price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is, it, people have to, to pay for the bar barbecue, obviously. But it goes for a great cause, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Polk County. So talk about the cause that's going towards what those funds will help. Well, those funds will help us continue to do what we've been doing for years, which is to serve Polk County. At kids after school mm -hmm. to help serve kids who are at risk in our community. Um, we help our kids with homework. We help them um, with tutoring. We serve them uh, snacks and hot meals all over Polk County. And coming up in June, we're actually going to be opening a new location right here in Bartow nice. at the Given Street um, Old Elementary School building where kids will be able to come in after school, get help with their homework, get a hot meal, and wait for mom and dad to come pick them up um, to go home. I know, as a basketball coach, you obviously see a lot of things and, and, and know the importance of uh, the impact sports has. Um, so there's part of that, the Boys and Girls Club, but there's also the education part because you got a you know, student athlete, you're a student before you're an athlete. So just talk about that interaction and how Polk County benefits by kind of uh, getting in front of these youngsters before bad things can start to happen. Well, I, I like to use some of our alumni as an example. Yeah, we've had kids like uh, Tracy McGrady come through that, Andre Berto, um, uh, recently Keyshawn Bryant. Mm -hmm. Those guys actually started at the Boys and Girls Club. And one of the beautiful things is to watch them blossom, not just in the sports, but as they go through school, high school, um, college. Um, we have Keyshawn right now at South Carolina. South Carolina. Um, he's doing great things. And just to watch those kids and know we had something to do with them getting to where they are is, is just an amazing thing to watch. You can't get three better examples of success stories than, than the, the ones you just named. So that, that's amazing. And uh, so again, it does go for a great cause, helping helping kids, and, and they can turn into a Tracy McGrady or an Andre Berto in the future. So that's that's awesome. Well, even if they don't turn into that person, maybe they'll be the next UPS driver. Maybe they'll be the next um, garbage man. Someone who can apply something that they've mm -hmm. learned early in life to better their community or just to take care of their family. Sure. Because you know, so many times we, we, we talk about the Keyshawn Bryans, but in actuality, there's so many other great mm -hmm. young people that came through the Boys and Girls Club that are just doing the simple stuff, mm -hmm. you know, being that plumber, that electrician. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that, you know, sometimes get overlooked, but 
and I understand it, but again, we're trying to build good human beings, help build good mm -hmm. caring citizens. So um, that that's kind of my pet peeve because I, I'm a stickler about people being good people. Sure. Yeah. And are you both volunteers as part of this uh, this event, or? This is the head volunteer. You're the head, head volunteer. Well, I, knew, I, knew head volunteer. There was, okay. I, I actually work for the Boys and Girls Club. You work Club. for the Boys. I'm the right. director <coughs> for the Boys and Girls Club. Well, how did you get involved, Courtney, and um, how did that evolve? Well, actually, my brother asked me to join the committee three years ago. So this will be my third year on the committee, and um, I do a lot of behind the scenes work, but on Saturdays, I sell pig bucks. So come see me to Get your pig bucks to get your barbecue. I was going to ask about that. So you, it's different different barbecue festivals. So people have to go, they turn in their money, they get the pig bucks, and then they go around and can get ribs or, or whatever they want. Mm -hmm. It's basically just dollar for dollar. Well, I think it's important, and we say this for all the events that we promote on here, you're going to go eat something that day. Yes. <laughs> Why not take that money that you're going to spend on whatever it is you're going to eat and put it towards something that is so impactful mm -hmm. to the community so on February 7th or February 8th they know where they can go and spend yeah, their money exactly, right exactly is there a website um, do you need more sponsors I know it's coming up real soon volunteers is there is there still a need other than just let's have as many people show up as possible and and generate as much dollars as we can oh well we're, 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 it's never too late for sponsors or volunteers <laughs> well I didn't think it would be <laughs> Uh, they can go to www.bgcpope.org, uh, and it's on our website, also on our Facebook page. You can get any information about the event, about volunteering, being a sponsor from our website. And we also have that up on the screen for the viewers to see and, and write that down as well. But I want to know, okay, we talked about the pig bucks. You only have enough pig bucks to go get one thing. What, what do you get at, at Smoke on the Water? What's your go-to barbecue? Hurry up, think about it quick, Courtney. Uh, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to get ribs. I'm okay. going to get ribs? Okay. I'm going to get ribs. I like the pork egg rolls. Okay, yeah, see, so you got the traditional and the mm -hmm. not so traditional. There you go, you can get it all, and you mentioned the, the uh, fried Oreos and, and things like that, Well, too. being the head of the volunteers, I was, <laughs> I was figuring to say, I've been there three years and never eaten anything because I haven't had enough time. Uh, but uh, it certainly takes volunteers, and it certainly takes uh, corporate yeah. partners, and events like these are, are what make Polk County special, and, and we certainly appreciate what both of you are doing. And Courtney, if you'll indulge me for just a second, I know you're coaching at Winter Haven High School. You know I'm a Bartow guy. Uh, <laughs> That was a pretty good game, uh, but you look at the talent on the boys' side and the girls' side in this county because the FHSA state finals and boys and girls are right here in Polk County. Probably some Polk County teams going to make it, don't you think, Coach? Yeah, well, I'm hoping this new format um, with Max Prep will be beneficial to Polk County because for so many years, Polk County, Lake Wales, Lakeland, Kathleen, mm -hmm. um, Bartow, Winter Haven. Beat up on each other. Yeah, we wind up beating up on each other. Yeah. George Jenkins is, is a great team this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa Fe Catholic. Uh, Lakeland Christian is always there. And, uh, and so we beat up on each other every year. Mm -hmm. And we just like to be able to see. Oh, I better not forget Arbondale either. <laughs> Lake Region. Lake Region, okay. Lake Region, I'm sorry. But yeah, we right. beat up on we're each gonna, other. We're going to put a list and you have to <laughs> hit all. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, we beat up on each other. And, and unfortunately, um, we have some really talented teams that don't get a chance to go play at the uh, Lakeland Center. So, I mean, hopefully this year maybe that will change. Good. Well, and I think it's another example. You know, you look at traditions. There's a lot of traditions in Polk County. Yeah. Uh, smoke on the water now, 16 years. It's a tradition. Uh, everybody in the state of Florida, boys and girls basketball, wanting to get to Lakeland, that's the destination. That's one of the important yeah. reasons why we have it is tradition. So great volunteers, great corporate partners, uh, great traditional events, and this is one of them. We thank you so much for all that you thank do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, well, make sure you go to Smoke on the Water. Kenesha Branch, the captain of the girls' weightlifting team at Kathleen High School, uh, we were able to catch up with her. This is our Athlete Spotlight. It's a great feature that we have each uh, week on Sports Central. Check this out. Chris and he will be back right here for the last segment of Sports Central. When I was younger, I was always bigger. And maybe because like I was just tall, because genetics, but um, I, will weigh, I will hold weight differently and it would be hard for me to lose weight. So when my brother came down from college, he introduced me to um, Coach Witt. And Coach Witt was really the person that brought me in because 
I was already strong, but like he got me stronger because I started lifting. So weightlifting was like more of an outlet for me because I, I was struggling with like depression and like I didn't have a lot of self-confidence in my body and who I was. So weightlifting was like a way out of it. It brought me out of the depression state I was in and it just helped me become the person I am now. If you lift weights, it does more than just make you stronger. It tones you, it shapes you. Um, and it overall, just as a person, it helps you mentally. Like, I focus more, because um, I work out, I sweat, I eat right. Weightlifting is a mind game. The mental aspect of lifting is the most hardest part. And being confident to come in front of all these people and clean and bench this weight, because that takes a lot too. That builds your confidence, so I just feel like it's just more of a mental game than a strength game. The whole time I'm at meets or practices, but I'm not thinking about school. I'm not thinking about all the other responsibilities I have to do when I get home, chores, homework. I think about the weight. I think about getting the weight up, getting it, cleaning it, jerking it, benching it. When I'm about to go up and jerk it, that moment is like me telling myself to trust myself, to trust my legs, to trust my body, to get underneath the bar, to stand up. Because it's like, it gives me a thrill, but it's also scary because what if I slip? What if I drop the weight? You have to be mentally prepared. And as you lift more, you get stronger, so your body can help with that. But if you tell yourself that you can't lift this weight, you're not going, that weight is not going to come up. It, no matter how hard you push, push no matter how hard you, you like squeeze, if you are to tell yourself you can't get this weight, you're not going to get the weight. Even though this is a very individual sport, this is a very team sport as well. And as the team grows, that togetherness of the team makes the team stronger, makes us want to go out and perform better. Not only for us, but for the school we're representing. There's no tryouts. This is not basketball. This is not volleyball. Um, you don't have to, you don't we, don't, we don't need you to make a, make a basket to be on the team. You come in, you start. You start wherever you are. If you, if you can only bench the bar, that's where you start at. We, weightlifting is based on growth. And as long as you pin in the work, and as long as we see that you trying, you, you on the team, like, but don't come in with it with negative. Don't don't be in the way. Don't be not benching. Don't just be a downer. Like this is an uplifting team. So I feel like anybody can weightlift. Anybody can do it. But if you if you are not ready to be in front of people, if you're not ready to come all in, I won't say join the team. Especially not Kathleen because um, our coach is already crazy as it is. And he pushed us, he pushed us. Like, I remember one, one night I woke up crying because I was so sore, like, I was so sore. And, and the next day I told him, and he was like, that, that's good, that, that I'm building you. Like, this, like, no one said it was gonna be easy. No one said you wasn't gonna cry. No one said that it was gonna come, like, in the morning as you wake up, you're gonna wake up benching 165. So I just feel like you could join the team. We're gonna welcome you. We're gonna help you learn the ropes, but just be prepared to work. This is, we're not, we're not coming to practice to play. We're not coming to practice to hang around. We're coming to practice to work. And if you're not ready to work, if you're not ready for us to be onto you, don't join the team. Weightlifting is fun. Weightlifting is exciting, it's thrilling. Um, having a sisterhood, having people to call when you need help, even, even after the season's over, like that bond will always be there. And you just grow amazing friendships with these other girls and memories, especially in high school, memories that you won't ever forget because, you know, some, sometimes high school is not great for everyone. So having, during a sport, any sport besides weightlifting, it's great to remember, to look back, to tell your kids, oh, I did this, I did that. So um, just don't be afraid, don't be scared. Because if you're scared, you just won't do nothing. You gotta jump into the pool one day or you just won't never learn how to swim. So I always always say just take a chance, do something different, challenge yourself. Hey everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside Chris Caprios. And uh, this fourth and final segment brought to us by Balmora Resort and it's a very nice place. Yes, it is. They have a, a great water park there. They have everything from condos up to the the houses, I think like eight bedroom mansion houses you can rent, that's that's the way to do it. And it's they're cool also way. working on the sports side of things, so yes. they opened up the Feltrum Sports Field and uh, 
Uh, so a lot more things planned there, but uh, definitely a fantastic location. So mm -hmm. if you have family and friends, you know, it's, it's cold up north, uh, coming down, you want to send them up there uh, among other properties here in Polk County. Uh, but uh, It's been cold show. down here too, though, not just up north. It was like 20-something degrees earlier this yeah, week. Yeah, uh, like for that long. Yeah, up yeah, there, we, it's six we months enjoy of, it here, of misery. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a great selling point for us here uh, in Central Florida. But a uh, great show, uh, talking about the Lancers and what all they have going on. And yeah, tr trying to develop uh, youth rugby in Polk County, smoke on the water, uh, and the Polk Senior Games. Just uh, three three uh, great segments so yeah. far. Yeah, like we talked about, it's barbecue season in Polk County. So smoke on the water is one of at least, what, three or four barbecue events. Um, so... It's a good time if you like to eat. It's a good time to be in Polk County. Um, but yeah, the, the rugby all the way to the senior games. Like we said at the, the start of the show, there's a lot going on all the time. It doesn't ever slow down. And you know, we talk about hosting on nearly 300 events a year. Right. Um, but then there's so many other local events that go on. And, and that's the benefit, really, of having great facilities um, that are good both for citizens and for visitors. Well, it, it, it's blended. It's, mm -hmm. it's generating the economic impact for Polk County, but it's also, like you said, the quality of life component to mm -hmm. it. So really, it's a win-win-win. And as all these visitors are coming into Polk County and these sports and special events, uh, just remember, tourism is the reason we don't pay personal income tax in the state of Florida. Yeah. So, <laughs> if the lines are a little bit longer, or traffic takes you a little bit longer, embrace them. Thank yeah. them for being here because it's safe. I, I forget <laughs> what it is. It's like six hundred and twenty-five dollars per per resident of Polk County. I think it's six twenty-six to be six, exact. Oh, but you know, me. <laughs> Sorry. the dollar, the dollar matters. <laughs> well, we also have, in, in addition to a number of arts and cultural events going on uh, around the county, uh, professional sports. You look at what we have now in Polk County uh, and our teams, and not only are they here, they're doing well. Uh, the Lakeland Magic yeah. are once again tied for the division lead. I think it's the Southeast Division. Uh, they're fifteen and thirteen, tied with College Park as we as we sit here today. Um, they have an upcoming uh, couple home games. They're on the road right now. Now, uh, of course, they play their games at the RP Funding Center, uh, but they've been here two years, and this is their third year, and they've made the playoffs the first two years. Yeah, it's it's a great, you know, I've talked about it all the time, a great brand of basketball to watch, and if you go to the games, they give you the programs. If you look at the, them and the visiting team, I mean, you're seeing players that played at Duke, that played at North mm -hmm. Carolina, they major D1 schools, and, and this is just their next step before they get to the NBA, yes. and some of them are two-way players. They're in the NBA now, and they come down, so it's a lot of fun to watch those games. It really is. You know, we've always talked about for many years the Lakeland Flying Tigers when your when your um, minor league system is doing real really well yeah you typically lose that team you mm -hmm. lose those players because they move them up because they're doing so well in the, in the the level that they're doing so the Orlando Magic are hanging in there they've been kind of uh, battling some uh, injuries this year so the team has been kind of back and forth but still yeah. First in the division. Yeah, the big club you mentioned, they actually just came back from, I think it was like a six-game West Coast trip. They did well on that. and uh, But, yeah, there's many players uh, that are on the Lakeland Magic now that I've been going up and playing. Yep. Um, so there, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Like we said, they have two games coming up. Uh, February 1st against Capital City, uh, and then February 7th uh, is Family Night, presented by uh, S Southeastern University. They play Raptors 905. So. Yeah, but before that, January 5th, coming up on Saturday, uh, the Florida Tropics will be at the RP Funding Center uh, for their Star Wars Night. Oh. Uh, that'll be at 5.05 p.m. against the St. Louis Ambush. They are 9-1 uh, on the season, leading the Major Arena Soccer League. They have forced... 84 goals and only allowed 38. So not only are they winning, they're beating people pretty, pr pretty, pretty good there. Um, and of course, with that relationship in the city of Auburndale, we can now talk about uh, this past weekend. Uh, we hosted the Montreal Impact of the yeah. Major League, you know, MLS. This is professional soccer. They were actually out at Lake Myrtle training during an over 100 team event, the Florida State Soccer Association's uh, classic. So huge happenings around Polk County mm -hmm. in soccer and professional sports. Sure, and, and again, it's, we keep going back to this today. It seems like that's the theme, but it speaks to the facilities in Polk County sure. that you can host a major league soccer team uh, for their spring training. So not only do we have college baseball spring training covered, major league baseball, now we have major league soccer spring training. I think it's also important to mention that these, these individuals, these teams, these organizations don't just show up. They have to be recruited. So you have to have facilities, but you also have to have the relationships and the, and the ability to go out and recruit. So um, 
I don't want to call it a perfect storm, but it's it's been a lot yeah. of a lot of efforts over the years, and of course the support of the board of county commissioners through the tourism development council and the municipalities around Polk County. Uh, it's a, it's a great time to be in Polk County. Yeah, it's funny how it all all comes together, and we always talk about partnerships. You mentioned the magic mm -hmm. partnership between them, the city of Lakeland, now the city of Winter Haven is a part of that. Now having the field house open where they're going to practice. You talked about the tropics. Miss Florida somehow fits into the middle of that. Another yeah. event we recruited, she actually MCs their games is the, the Tropics uh, kind of game day uh, MC. So all these things that, that we are able to bring into Polk County partner together, they work together, and it's, it's for the greater good of the entire county. Well, and, and speaking of professional sports, we'd be remiss if not to mention it's very close. Spring training, the Detroit mm -hmm. Tigers will be back in Lakeland over there at Publix Field at Joe Martin Stadium. Uh, their first game will be on the 21st of February against Southeastern, and then I believe the next day they're home on the 22nd uh, for their first MLB uh, spring training game. Uh, but those tickets are on sale now, 863-413-4140. Uh, and after that, the Flying Tigers. Yeah. Their season opens up, what is it, uh, April 9th, I believe? Yeah, early in April. They, As soon as the big club goes back, they uh, they start up their season. And, and it's an exciting time to watch uh, Tiger spring training because they, I think they were just named in the top five of MLB's pipeline, their minor league system. I and mean, they have some of the top prospects in the game of baseball. Obviously, it's part of a rebuilding process sure. they're going through, sure. but part of that process is building up your farm system, and that's what they're doing. I and mean, they have, I think, uh, like I said, they're they're as far as the major league clubs go, one of the top uh, pipelines in major league baseball. So. Some of those players may start out in see, Lakeland this right. year. Um, they're definitely going to start out in Lakeland in spring training, but they may stay around and play uh, for the Flying Tigers for a little bit, but probably not too long before moving along the, the system. Well, Chris, you've been a, a lifelong Tigers fan. Uh, obviously, you've seen over the years growing up in Lakeland. You know, we've seen the likes of Justin Verlander and, and mm -hmm. some others that have ended up on that team that made that championship run for all those years. Sure. That all started in Lakeland. Oh, it always does. Yeah, Verlander, I know Rick Porcello was yeah. one of those, and now he's off with, uh, I think he's still with the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it always starts here, um, whether it's in spring training and then they go right up to the big club or they make their way through the system to what it used to be when I was growing up. You mentioned I've been going to games forever. It used to be just the Lakeland Tigers yeah. and uh, now the Flying Tigers. So it's fun to watch as they develop and, and move through the system. And again, not just the 60 plus million dollars in economic impact of Polk County, but the quality of life thing. So mm -hmm. cool stuff. We already mentioned it earlier in the program and we saw some footage, but the senior softball tournament of champions will be February 5th through the 9th. And as I mentioned before, for over 100 teams will be in Polk County for the 14th year, uh, bringing this uh, fantastic senior softball event. Uh, and and it, it's really a spectacle to get all these uh, these senior softball players in and, and how competitive it is and the amount of money they spend while they're here. Sure, yeah, yeah, like you said, the best in the nation. Uh, you have to win your state, really, to come here. Um, so it, yeah. it's great to have them. Uh, switching gears, you talked about uh, quality of life. Uh, Legoland Florida Resort continues, on, more on the tourism side, continues to grow, about to open uh, Pirate Island Hotel in April, but yeah. they have Ninjago Days coming up. So that's something uh, for a lot of these teams that come in that we hear they want things to do after their event. That's definitely one of them for, for teams that come in uh, maybe on the smaller uh, youth uh, area. So always new things happening at Legoland Florida Resort. Well, um, not, not only that, but the water park is opening up February 15th with heaters. <laughs> so they will have the yeah. water will be heated and yeah. everything will be good to go. So uh, visitors can enjoy that uh, even earlier than before, which is uh, which is great because that means more people come in. And yeah, yeah. And Ninjago Days is part of your regular admission to uh, Legoland Florida Resort. Uh, and that, that's taking place January 25th, 26th, and then February 1st, 2nd, 8th and 9th. They'll have uh, special food trucks, I think, out there, uh, and then uh, obviously some new characters to meet and greet as well, so it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I recently made a, a major announcement that USA Softball will start their road to Tokyo right here in Polk County. That's coming up. Uh, there is one public appearance for them in their training, but uh, there's been such a great response that that event's actually sold out already, uh, so a great, great to uh, testament that they are willing to and recruited to Polk County to mm -hmm. start that road to the 2020 Olympics. Uh, as we move on, we got some sponsors we need to thank. We do. Uh, thanks to our sponsors for the show today. Uh, Hampton and Lakeside Village, Legoland Florida Resort, good timing on that one, right? Uh, Country Club of Winter Haven, Harry's Seafood Bar and Grill, and Hall Communications, all great partners of tourism and sports uh, throughout Polk County. Absolutely. If you want more information on uh, sports marketing, you can go to centralfloridasports.com or give us a call at 863 
651-457-5050. The next edition of Sports Central will come to you live from uh, right here on February 7th. Uh, but in the meantime, you can watch three years of this program uh, or you can give us a call. But don't forget to visit the Visitor Information Center one half mile south of on, uh, excuse me, on I-4. Let me start over. One half mile south of I-4 and Highway on 27. There you go. That's <laughs> a those, tough one to say. It is for those discount attraction tickets and all the information of the great things to do in Polk County. Uh, but until then, for Chris Caprios, I'm Neil Duncan. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.